Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, it's Magic Brad with the Magic Show, the Magic Brad Show and Synergy Cafe. And I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I've got a new friend on here. I think I'm going to resonate well with him because I watched some of his videos. His name is Park Howell. Are you related to Thurston Howell the third? Thurston, my wife is lovey. Uh, <laughs> we have a beautiful little yacht, but we never take it out because we're afraid Dangerous. we're going to get lost in a three hour tour. <laughs> so I take it you've been asked this before. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> so where are you? Uh, you got a wife and you got kids too? Wife, we've got three kids. We uh, live in Phoenix, Arizona, but we're empty nesters. So we've got our youngest son, Caden. He's up in La uh, Las Vegas. He's become a Twitch star oh, celebrity. Wow. So he's up there uh, broadcasting out of Vegas. We've got our middle child, our son, Parker, who's in Hollywood, Burbank, and he's about ready to launch a premiere tv show on twitch dungeons and dragons live i never played it as a kid growing up but now i guess i'm gonna have to do that and, and then we've got pong? our daughter and grandson down in uh san diego they live in north park so you ever play, you ever play pong get over to california quite a bit you ever play pong gosh way back when i mean you're dating me i mean that was the <laughs> coolest computer game ever yes, a, little, a little square dot and two little lines that's all Doing, doop, 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 doop. you know and just draw the, the well, ball this is in. weird because the last few interviews i've done they're all arizona tucson phoenix uh, sedona oh. um uh, some of the other places in arizona what are some other places in it but they're well, coming out of Arizona like crazy. There's another Black one. Staff, yes, Preston, Black Staff. Yes. Yeah. There you mm -hmm. go. That's kind of weird. So that's how stuff works. That's probably how we got connected. Some kind of witchcraft. <laughs> See that Brand little subtle Brand plug Brand there? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. Stand by. Stay till the end of the video before you... All that stuff. So the was, people have probably figured it out and they read your shirt it says story and that's kind of what we're going to be talking right now and i did some little poking around and research on it do you remember when budweiser they changed their commercials and they were really more talking about how they manufactured the beer mm -hmm. because beer is beer is beer right right they got into how you manufacture it and they told a story about how it was all manufactured that's what i understood hockey sticked it and got some some momentum because people were really intrigued of how the beer was actually made well i i wonder um i would have to look that up the one study i saw by keith quisenberry who did two different studies on super bowl commercials and which super bowl commercials resonated the most and he found that story structure was always a big part if they had a story structure to it and budweiser was all always one of the top winners in people remembering, recalling, and actually being able to recite what was happening in the commercials. But those commercials weren't about manufacturing. They were, you know, the Clydesdales and the Lost Puppy. Yeah. And they really took you on an emotional journey that had nothing to do with beer other than you would see the Budweiser logo in the background. So right. while that manufacturing story sounded like it was very powerful, what I always caution brands is it's not about what you make, but what you make happen in people's lives. And so they were just simply pulling on that emotional heartstring yeah. that, you know, you have that first beer, you feel all kind of warm and cuddly. You know, the, some of their best storytelling is around that where they don't ever even show a bottle of beer. Well, this was way back even, I think even before they started pushing the Clydesdales heavily and stuff. Oh uh, yeah. So, so, so it might've been the might've time been where people were really, yeah. Now with, you know, uh, with craft beer and so forth, they probably can't lay claim to that handcrafting of Budweiser right. anymore. Sam Adams owns that, as do the others. Now, yeah. you know, Budweiser being a mass marketed beer, you can see why they definitely went to emotion in their storytelling. I was just going to say the word emotion because people buy from emotion and they justify with logic. And You're I totally think right. a lot of times these marketers, they do it the flippy flop way. And they're trying <laughs> to talk about the numbers and look at all the clicks and views. Those clicks and views don't matter unless they ring up in the cash register. You're exactly right. Yeah, I, I say the same thing. I say people buy with their hearts and they justify their purchase with their heads. Yeah, um, exactly. And we get trapped, you know, in the business world, people get trapped in having to sound smart, look smart, be rational, show me your PowerPoint deck, load it with slides and charts and graphs and data and that sort of thing. When all customers really want, we're all homo sapiens, we want a story. 
We want something to place it all into context and emotional context for us. And, and trust. Don't you believe that trust yeah. is really huge? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen that over and over again. Stories, you know, they, they deliver a truth that creates the trust. Um, I saw this. And I'll give you an example of it. I was in Melbourne, Australia about a year and a half ago, and I was sitting with a Swedish guy about my age, late 50s. Uh, he made his business selling high-end German car washes, importing them to, uh, in, into Australia. But he was a Swede. When he was in his early 20s, I think 21, he got on his own sailboat, a 24-foot uh, sailboat, from Stockholm, and I think he spent six to eight months sailing by himself to, uh, to Melbourne. Once he got there, he loved it. So he stayed there and built a life and a career and a family and all that. And he shared this story once with me because he was, we were having wine and he was like, I don't really get this story thing. You know, what, how, what's it have to do with business? And so I asked him, I said, well, let's put it to a test. I said, when you were sailing around the world by yourself, did you ever have that moment like Tom Hanks had in Castaway where you're at sea and like the, the whale comes up and flips water on you and winks at you and goes off and he goes, no, no, that never happened. Then there was this long pause and he said, well, there was that one time. And I go, oh, what was that? He goes, and he had this great Swedish accent. I wish I could recreate it because the story's even better then. He said he was at the Galapagos Islands and he was about ready to take on and, and travel through this channel that of course he had never sailed through before and it was starting to get dark. Back then he had no GPS, everything was done by compass, dead reckoning um, and a sextant. And he decided I'm going to harbor up out here, weigh anchor, uh, wake up in the morning when I can do it in the light of day. So he does, he goes to sleep, he's down, you know, down in his, in his hole sleeping. And he says, have you ever heard that weird screech, uh, screeching sound that dolphins make in the wild? And I go, no, I guess I never have. He goes, well, I woke up to that. And I went up top and I saw about eight dolphins swimming frantically around my boat, screeching this wild, crazy screeching. He goes, I looked up and realized that the tide had gone out more than I had anticipated. And I was about to be impaled with my boat onto lava rock. And I said, oh. do you think they were warning you and waking you up? And he said, why else would they be doing that? So off he sailed. <laughs> and I said, that's a pretty amazing story. And then he had this, got this grin on his face. And I go, what's, what, what's up? He goes, I just realized every big sale I ever made for a car wash always came after I told one of my sailing stories. And I said, why do you think that is? He goes, I have no idea. I said, because if I'm going to invest in a very expensive high-end German car wash, I want a guy that's going to be there for me through thick and through thin when that thing has problems or install or whatever. And you have demonstrated that in your own personal sailing story that you are going to be there for me. Therefore, that story delivered a truth that creates trust. And just an example how you can use personal stories in business to have that kind of impact. He wasn't even selling me a car wash, but by golly, if I was buying one, I'd buy one from him. That's a pretty cool story because he's in sales. Yep. Figuratively, a sales and sales. A sailor in sales. Very exactly right. <laughs> I think it's really important to be able to do that. I think bottom line, we're we're humans, we want to resonate with each other and we want to connect with the same people that we have our similar interests with. So if you tell that story, it's much more easy to get connected with those types of people. Yeah. So, I'm a big but, believer um, that words create worlds and stories connect them. So if you and I, you know, just before we did this recording here, we shared a little bit about each one another. You're in Minneapolis and I shared the story about as a kid growing up in Seattle, we would drive out to Minnesota up to the Detroit Lakes area to visit my grandpa and grandma. And as a little kid, you know, seven-year-old, it always was a grand adventure to me. It felt like I was in a new world when I got there. But in just simple, that simple little sharing of those stories, you and I were able to connect our worlds together a little bit a little bit more understanding exactly. and, empathy, like, and that's what we need in business you've heard the the person that's buying a drill at the hardware store they're not buying the drill they're buying the hole exactly that kind of thing that's yep. exactly what you it. make it's it's like, what you make happen <laughs> like in travel you know you jump on the airplane you go to the hotel but it's the environment that you really resonate with so it really yeah. has nothing to do with the price of the plane ticket and all that i mean the price of the plane ticket was nine hundred dollars and did you have a good time yeah i had thousands of dollars worth of good time 
makes it worth it instead yeah. of trying to calculate well i don't know it's a six hour flight and <laughs> Well, Airbnb is one of the best storytelling brands out there. They do just such a marvelous job and it's because they're very intentional about it. And Magic Brad, I'm a big believer that we are all intuitive storytellers. It's hardwired into us as you often hear as homo sapiens. It's what separates us from all other beings and certainly separates us from all other apes out there is we think and, and plan and act in story. And I like to move people from being intuitive to being intentional about it. Otherwise, you end up defaulting back to looking smart, sounding smart, trying to uh, charts, graphs, stats when it's stories that connect us and build well, up know, trust. I, I just had a conversation, I believe it was yesterday, with a guy that I am uh, just got on the phone with him because he was having some hard times with his business. He's trying to get into this affiliate marketing business. He was a truck driver. So his challenge was he didn't know nothing about technology. But when I told him that he should start resonating with other truck drivers, because they're probably in a similar place where all of a sudden, you know, the automated trucks, so you're starting to lose truck, they're maybe thinking, maybe I should get into affiliate marketing instead of this truck driving thing. He's going to resonate with those people. So soon he started telling me about his truck driving. Initially, he wasn't a video guy. You could tell. Mm -hmm. He just was kind of shy. And, but as soon as he got into his truck thing, his stories he could talk his talk and he felt so much more comfortable communicating. And all you have to do is grab the phone, do a little video. And I think there's, it's going to be more and more uh, people, especially with this COVID thing going on. People are doing videos from their homes and things. It's more acceptable that you just have your phone. You don't need no high tech cameras, you know, these $5,000 cameras. You can do it with just your phone, but it's got to be put together right. Like I said, with intention as opposed to just throwing stuff out there. You got to know where you're, what you're going for. You're begin with the end in mind, so to speak, right? No. Well, you're exactly right. And there is so much content that you and I and everyone even watching this are absolutely bombarded by that I believe ADD has become a communicable disease and you and I and everyone are the viruses. We keep pushing it <laughs> out there. True. So there is so much noise. The only way you are going to hack through that noise and hook the hearts of your audiences is by telling them a story. And it doesn't have to be a long drawn out story, just short, simple, but use some storytelling techniques. I train on the and button, therefore, which is a way of finding the theme for a story. And then the five primal elements of story of time stamp, location stamp, central character that your audience is going to understand and appreciate, you know, live vicariously through. There has to be action then. Something has to go down and some surprise that evolves out of that action that leads to this aha moment. And that in that aha moment is your business point. Nobody can argue with a true story, well told, that makes a marvelous point. They can argue with your decks all day long, but they can't argue with a good story. So I guess with this video that we're doing now, of course our intention is to you know, highlight you and get more business and maybe for me, so that's the intention. Let's get a little more clear on what your business is, what you do. And I'll just ask, yeah. do you script out a story for people or do you produce the actual video or do you just offer coaching, consulting, or do you got classes? I think yep. you've got, I know you got a book because I saw it on your website. So yeah. So, so what is it your business actually does for people when they go, Hey, I want this, uh, this, this. I help. help you. I help leaders of purpose-driven brands excel through the stories they tell. I've been in the branding world for 35 years, and I ran my own ad agency here in Phoenix for 20 of those years, and I got just kind of tired of the old ad agency way and really realized that it just didn't work anymore. 2006, I saw that the branding, the way we used to do it, the communication, the advertising just stopped working because brands used to own the influence of mass media. But with technology, the masses have become right. the media and they own your story. They own my story. They own every story out there. So I made this big pivot. I learned about Hero's Journey, Joseph Campbell. We had our middle child, our son, going to film school at the time at Chapman University in Orange. And I just had him send me his books and his lectures since I was paying for them when he was done with them. And I wanted to learn what did Hollywood know that I needed to know as a communicator. And that was the launch then of the business of story. I started studying it. I've got a podcast, the business of story that's been up for five years now, over 260 episodes with story artists from around the world. 
teaching people how to apply storytelling in every aspect of the personal life and the professional life. And so what I do now is I'm hired to coach, teach, consult, and speak on the power of story. I do it for the United States Air Force for the last four years, go out to DC twice a year and work with their brigadier to four-star generals on how to incorporate storytelling within their ranks to attract and retain the top airmen and women. Um, Dell Computer, McCormick, the Spice Company. I taught at Arizona State University for five years, storytelling to, in an executive master's programs to executives around the world. My job now is to help people, whether they're trying to create a brand new brand, refresh a brand story, or create their own personal brand story to grow their influence in their careers. I take them through my story cycle system, my process that outlines it like almost like a screenwriter would outline your big story. And then I teach them how to tell it, how to tell it online, how to tell it in person, how, it, how to tell it through their marketing and sales. And it's always very human centric. When you tell stories, they just make you naturally become human centric. So it's like, why do I do this? What's my origin story? How do I connect that my world with your world? I have to first understand your world and empathize with it. And I use these storytelling techniques to get people to understand where their customers really are coming from. And then I put the whole narrative together for them. I no longer do the ad campaigns and the story activation. I bring in team members to do that. Or sometimes I'll work with the agency that's already working with somebody. My job is like their author of their brand story and helping them really understand what their narrative is all about so that they will stand out um, because we are communicating what they stand for in the marketplace. So uh, with my background in the event industry, uh, did you have a lot of speaking engagements coming up and are you still doing that? Because this COVID thing, it's changed. I'm assuming some of that oh, yeah. went to the webinar base. Everything's webinar. So yes, <clears throat> I've done a ton of speaking all around the world and now that's all shut down. So we have gravitated, uh, moved over to Zoom online sessions and finding ways to make that fun and interesting. And the big thing that I like to do whenever I'm teaching or doing a master class is I want to make sure it is immediately applicable. So I've got lots of things. Let's see. I've got like this little workbook that people use that takes them through the three elements. It's my little field guide that they write okay, in. Cool. When I'm doing it online now, I shoot them a PDF of it. They can print it out and they can work right along that. With that, everything I do, even though it's online, is to make sure that that person, that attendee is learning. We are igniting or reigniting within them their inner storyteller and then using these proven narrative frameworks that they can use every single time to go out and use on their communication, whether it be an email, to a full website user interface, to their ongoing branding marketing materials. Well, when we talked earlier, you had mentioned uh, an interest in possibly seeing a magic trick online. Yes. So I'm, yes, I'm going absolutely. to do that what because is that? I, I use magic you as a metaphor. Me? I don't teach. Unless I teach in <laughs> private, I don't teach in public. And that's, that's an ongoing thing. I see people teaching it. And when you teach the magic in public, it loses the magic. It's kind of like giving yeah. someone a gift without wrapping it. <laughs> well, well, I'm a little different in that, in that I tell people that you have to understand the magic of storytelling if you're going to cast the spell. So that's why I teach them the applied science, the narrative frameworks, and the bewitchery. Here's how it connects. We're so going to lead into that after this. <laughs> <laughs> the, be, the bewitchery, that magic, the oh, magic yeah. word, bewitchery. We're coming up on that pretty soon here. So here's right. a little magic trick. It's uh, pretty basic. It's a sleight of hand thing. Like if you look at these two fingers, this one and this one, they're about the same size, right? Uh huh. Now that's perceived reality. That's from your point of view. And the reason I bring this up is because before this COVID thing happened with the event industry. I thought the event industry was all that that's all there really was because people want to do events. People want to meet people. I never thought that this COVID thing would put the brakes on the event industry. So I had to shift my perception. So these two fingers looking like they're the same size from this point of view, it looks different from this point of view. Wow. Isn't that weird? Looks a lot different. Uh -huh. So it's how you look at things, being able to shift your thinking. Cause like, in your business, some people think, oh, I don't know if I could tell a story about that on video and stuff. You just set the video off to the, can off to the side and then interview the person and just talk like a human and they can yeah. tell that story. So 
let's kind of get into the bewitchery because you've got a book. I do. I book. Brand new, brand bewitchery, how Ooh. to wield the story cycle system to craft spellbinding stories for your brand. This has been six years in the writing and about 15 years, over 15 years now in the creation and all my studying, everything that I've learned and applied in brand storytelling, narrative creation is in here. It's like a workbook. You can pull it up, you can do the worksheets, you know, just uh, it, 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 it takes you through a worksheet basically on each one of the chapters to help you define everything from your position in the marketplace right up to your purpose. What do you stand for that makes you stand out? And everything in between, there's case studies in there. And there's a whole ton of little storytelling uh, uh, exercises. I call them story quests that you then go out and enact in your life and really start using this stuff immediately. And I can only assume there's probably a bookstore somewhere out there on the internet where you could get it. Is there a place <laughs> where someone could find that book? It starts with an A. It's, um, um, oh, Amazon. Big, big Amazon. Book Amazon. <laughs> you can purchase a print copy, a Kindle copy, and here's the request. If you would do me a huge favor as a new author, the only way we get found in the Amazon jungle is through ratings and reviews. So you buy it, you like it, whatever, give me a rating and review, let me know what you think. But I guarantee you this process has built companies and brands by as much as 600%. And they're detailed in here how they did it and how you can apply it to your world as well, whether it's a company brand or your own personal brand that you wanna grow for influence. Well, I believe it. I think it's important that people start getting on video like this and telling stories and being more authentic, genuine, sincere, and integritous and kind. And like we'd have to make the world a better place. I really liked your magic trick, by the way. And the, and the metaphor of perception, you know, yeah. I, I think that's really interesting, really well done. Well, the, the magic thing is interesting because it is a global thing. Everybody's interested in it. That's why I think it's not good to expose it. It's kind of like telling your kids that Santa Claus is your dad. He's not your dad, he's Santa Claus. But it ruins the magic, you know? Yes. So it's good to kind of keep it. Like my wife, she doesn't want to know how it works. She likes to be in the, you know, have that, that magical feeling. And because once you know, it's kind of like, that's kind of stupid. It's kind of like a puzzle, you know? It's kind of like a comedian telling the punchline before they tell the joke. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't work with that. I'm way. with you. Keep that joke to your, keep that magic trick to yourself. Yeah. Unless you're really interested in it, then what you do is you work with mentors and you do it in private and you learn it that way. You don't just, people are doing it on YouTube and it's just terrible. It's yeah. just ruining it. So I how do we you. get a hold of you, sir? You can track me down at businessofstory.com or shoot me an email, park, P-A-R-K, at businessofstory.com business of story that's easy enough to remember and, and you can find me on facebook and linkedin i got such a weird name that's my handle everywhere park howell so track me down there too love to have you that's why i branded magic brad so i could kind of be different from all the brents and the brandons and the other brads i love it i thought it was great <laughs> so if you want to do another one of these down the road maybe you've got i don't know maybe you want to do a series or something seeing you're not speaking in person maybe you want to do a series online or something i'm open that to would that. be cool i do have an online course people can track it down at uh, businessofstory.thinkific.com. They can, it takes them by the hand through the whole course. But I would love to, if you're open to that, we could do little segments of this for your viewers. And I could take them, you know, we have one show that concentrates on one particular chapter of it. And I can help them start dialing in their brand story that way. Yeah, too. why don't you give some thought to that? Maybe like a lesson one, two, three, or a lesson one through seven or something. We could just do a thing like uh storytelling Sunday or storytelling Saturday or Monday or Tuesday. No, I, I, I would, I would be Let's happy. Let it brew. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay, it. Thank you, Park. I appreciate it. Uh, the, peace, stay safe out there. It's kind of strange in this world right now. Yes, it and, is. Uh, peace, love, and happiness. Thank you.